This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. In this video, we're going to cover how you can set up an image to be able to zoom on hover, such as this. When we hover over these, we're going to be seeing that they kind of jump out, they get a little bit bigger, and so we get a sort of zoom effect on this. Now, inside of your bubble application, you're going to need to be able to install at least one plugin. I, at a minimum, you're going to want to use the classify plugin. And if you are wanting to do it another way, you can install the CSS tools. We'll show you how to do it both ways, but our preference is to use the classify approach. The reason being is that there are no workflows associated with that. So on this page, if I am going to be using the CSS tools approach, I need to put an element onto the page for CSS tools. Uh, another reason why our preference is the classify plugin is because you don't need to add any kind of a element to your page either beyond the HTML element, which is a little bit easier to work with at times than some plugin elements might be in terms of placement and getting away from responsive issues. So once you have the CSS tools on your page, you would go into the workflow and you would probably set it up as a page as loaded workflow. And the first thing that you'll end up doing is saying a add class. And you can just type this in and you'll be able to see these a lot quicker. So we want the add class by ID, the CSS tools. We're going to tell it which element and then the element ID and the class to add. So you can see in this example, we have CSS tools A. So what we're doing is we're selecting one of the two in this case, but typically you just have one on your page It'll probably just automatically select that one for you. And then we need to give an ID and an ad for these. These are associated with the same kind of thing and we'll take a look at that in just a second. So the element ID here is hey CSS and the other is inner MG. But once we have these in there, then you want to add your next step, which is the add custom style to CSS. This is the bit of code that you're using. So here we're going to just type in custom style. Right. So you again need to select the CSS tools that you're wanting to add this to. And then what you'll be able to do is just add in these values. I'm just going to go ahead and just paste those right in there. So if you have editor access to this tutorial, you'll be able to just copy that right in, but not difficult to be able to just recreate that on your own manually. Now, what you can see here is that we have inner IMG and inner IMG and semicolon hover. So referring back to this add custom style to head CSS tools, we, sorry, this one here, I, we are showing element ID here of hey CSS and then class to add inner IMG. So what's going on here is on the page, we actually have a element that will have an ID attribute added to it. And this ID attribute on this group here is hey CSS. Now, if you don't see this option inside of your bubble application for ID attribute, what you need to do is first go into your settings and then you're gonna go into your general. And once you get into general, you're gonna scroll down to this area. I typically just kind of reference it with this favicon here and these two colors just underneath that, expose the option to add an ID attribute, a small little checkbox, make sure that's checked. Then as soon as you do that, every element that you put onto the page, including the page itself, the page itself will even be able to have an ID attribute. So what we're doing is adding this ID attribute, hey CSS, to that element. Then the workflow is adding the class which means it's basically changing our ID and, and it's changing it in such a way that it's going to be recognized by CSS classes. 
And so what we're doing here is basically just changing that ID element. That's uh, kind of a redundant phrase right there. Uh, so here we're giving it the actual CSS and you can see this is that same uh, value that we just changed it to. So that's basically the ID. It's just giving the CSS here the information about which element should it apply this type of uh, code to. And in, and in this situation, the code here is a transition. It's just making the element move in some way. And what we're actually looking at is giving it an idea of the amount of time that it should take for the transition to occur. And so we have 0 0.3 seconds. If you wanted to make it so that it sort of popped out faster, you know, make this value higher. If you want it to go even slower, slow it down by putting it to, you know, 0 0.1 or even 0 0.05. But you can very easily make some adjustments here uh, to that transition as the speed. And then underneath it, what we have is inner IMG again with this hover. So the, the hover portion of it is basically saying, look at the element whose ID is inner IMG. And then when that element is hovered, do this to it. And what it is doing is it's transforming. And the transformation that is having on this is the scale. It's how big is it compared to its normal size. So it's a 1.1. So it's just a 10% you know, type of an increase, not very much. So you can make adjustments here if you want it to get bigger and such. Just be aware that when you do make changes to the size of it, I, if you are on a mobile device and you happen to have an image that is already at, you know, say 320 by 320 pixels, and you try to transform this to 2.0, well, that's going to bring it to around 640 to 640 pixels. So play around with it, you know, while you're developing and, and just double check the uh, sort of scale that you have on there and how that might uh, impact it. Because if it goes beyond the page on what the device is, then they won't see most of the element, right? It will just kind of go off page. Okay, so that's basically what the code is doing. So on the page, we have the other approach and that's with the classify. So the other approach, we're actually using an HTML element and we're using that HTML element to just basically hold on to the code. And so right here, I would just draw out an HTML element. As soon as I put in that HTML element, first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I wanna put out my style tags. And, and what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the, the start and the end point for the code that's associated with the CSS, the styling. And to basically tell it that this is the end point, you put this backslash in front of it there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna come in here and copy the same code. And you can see that there is a difference. The name is try and try hover. Uh, these sort of names that are being used there as the IDs, they don't make any difference really. It's it's kind of up to you. I uh, you do want to make sure though that you're not you know doing too much uh, to a point that you end up having too many different dashes and things. You leave them a little bit simpler. I uh, but when we look at an element like this one in the ID attribute, you can see I have this formatting which was different than the formatting that was used with this Hey CSS. This formatting is actually what you use in association with the classify plugin. This ID attribute format is actually allowing us to do the same exact thing that those workflows did with the CSS tools, which is basically just add a class to the element so that our code knows which element to apply the style to, right? So uh, on this particular one, it looks like it copied over the wrong stuff. Maybe I didn't have this uh, copied and I want to get back into there and copy the correct one so that I got the right names. Okay, so what I have on the page here are two different uh, elements with the same class, right? So when you set up your styling, if you have multiple elements that you want to have the same style attributed to, well, just make sure that you add the same class name, right? Now, in this situation, I actually just want to show a slight variation on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dash uh, one here. And what I'll come in to do here is add a dash one to this HTML 
And when I'm doing the dash one, I need to put it right there, right? The dash one is part of my name. So here, I'm just gonna make it a little bit different. I'm gonna do a transition. Let's say it's transition will be faster. Let's do, or rather slower. Uh, so 0 0.1 and let's make it bigger. Let's go up to uh, 1.8. Uh, and let's preview this page right now and just see that little bit of difference uh, because previously we had just one code that would actually work for two different elements. So here's uh, the try and here's the try dash one. So you can see that difference uh, that happens here. And here's from the CSS tool. So that has the same setup as the uh, original try with the classify, All right? So you can play around with that. Now, another thing too, uh, when it comes into creating these types of things, I, you can actually do dynamic expressions here. So if there was some reason that you wanted to be able to have multiple things, maybe like within a repeating group and you were using some kind of CSS styling, uh, you can do dynamic expressions to reference the current cells index and then put that into your class ID as well and have that dynamic expression to represent the current cells index. Uh, I personally don't really see many use cases for that in this type of situation, but there are other areas in which you might want to utilize some custom CSS in your application, one of which is in the sort of like clickable uh, category tags and such. And in that situation, you might end up putting them into a repeating group. And so we do have a video on using custom CSS to create our uh, category tags. And there is a part of that video that goes over to the use of it for a uh, status. Maybe it's like a job status. And so having the sort of dynamic colors and that's how we were getting that accomplished with this insert dynamic data. So hopefully this is helpful to you and you'll be able to take what you learned and put it into your own bubble application. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.